Beyond the royal islanders, we come from Montreal. We come from Bird and West Mountain, south of Goat St. Paul. And when we get to Germany, we'll show them we're the best. We're the boys to stop the bullets with the Molsons on our chest. So let's away to Germany, we'll be our battle cry. So let's away to Germany, we'll drink before we die. And when we get to Germany, we'll show them we're the best. We're the boys to stop the bullets with the Molsons on our chest. In 1915, Herbert Molson, heir to Molson's Ale, joins the Black Watch. But while Herbert and his men overseas depend on booze to keep them warm in the trenches, back at home, Saskatchewan becomes the first wartime province to ban the sale of alcohol. And we've got to remember what the function of booze is. It's not simply to get tanked, right? That it's serving this, this kind of uh, multiple purposes. One of them is it's giving you liquid courage, right? If you want to get up out of the trench, go over the top, ultimately what you want to do is uh, drink a shot of rum when you can to give you this kind of courage. In 1916, Prohibition claims Ontario. With the drinkers of the nation in Europe, the way for state-sanctioned sobriety is cleared. In the same year, Herbert Molson earns the rank of colonel and becomes a father figure to his troops in France. While Canada continues to go dry, Colonel Molson is wounded in combat, leaving shrapnel lodged in his head. He is discharged for his injuries. The future of brewing and distilling in Montreal is bleak as Herbert Molson re-enlists. Quebec is now surrounded by dry provinces. The Catholic clergy adopts prohibitionist attitudes and rallies the government of Quebec to ban the public sale of liquor. My dearest son Frederick, don't worry about going to college. Daddy has enough to educate his children and take care of them even if the brewery closes. But we may not be able to do all that we are used to doing. Herbert Molson. Herbert's brother, Percival Molson, is killed in 1917 by an enemy bombing. Herbert's resolve from the trenches to defeat the prohibitionist movement is now stronger than ever. When this war is over, when the battle has been won, I will return to fight an enemy as great as the Kaiser, Herbert Molson. We see now in our streets the men who have fought for us in France made drunk and robbed of their hard-earned pay. Their wrongs cry to heaven for vengeance. The bar and its disgusting and degrading evil has no respectable friend left now. Bishop Farthing. Ah, oh, you psalm singers! I wish you could all lie shivering in a hole full of icy liquid with every nerve in your body quivering in pain. Any one of you would need a barrel of rum to keep his miserable life in his body. Sergeant Harold Baldwin.
Canadian soldiers returned from one war, only to step into another, this time on home soil. The Premier of Quebec, Lomar Gouin, has outlawed liquor, wine, and full-strength beer as of February 1918. Their battle against totalitarianism is far from over. Boys overseas were entitled to booze. They come back and they're no longer entitled to booze. And they're thinking like Herbert Molson, we fought for freedom, we fought for liberty, and now we don't have it within our own midst, within the nation of Canada. So they fight back. Having resisted the tyranny of Wilhelm, we did not propose to submit to the meanest of all tyrannies, the tyranny of petticoat government and its embrace of the dry regime, the Great War Veterans Association. Alcohol is being demonized by prohibitionists, criminalized by provincial legislation, as soon the federal government. The prohibition measures introduced in Canada have caused a feeling of injustice to creep into the minds of the worker of Canada. I make this declaration feeling that the workers of Canada want to be able to have light beer and wine as part of the solid enjoyment they are entitled to. Tom Moore, Labour Union President. The battle for the drink reaches beyond the veterans and labourers and extends to the academics of McGill. Prohibition violates the first principles of individual freedom. It destroys the comfort of the home and the amenities of social life. It makes a harvest for the thieves and criminals of the underworld. It opens wide the door to every form of tyranny and bigotry. Stephen Leacock, Professor of Political Economy. On April 10, 1919, Premier Gouin allows for a referendum to be held and a propaganda war ensues in the closing days of the vote. As prohibitionists pin the evils of society on alcohol, Herbert Molson and the Wets urge for moderation in drinking. On the eve of the vote, Herbert Molson rallies his men one last time in the form of a parade to crush the ambitions of the prohibitionist movement. Water makes mud! And we've had mud enough! Down with Prohibition and the extra drive! Let's all go home. Let Toronto run the show. Herbert Molson manages to persuade the public to vote in favor of beer and wine, although hard liquors are still banned. So where does this culture of moderation come from? Well, it comes from this period during the 1920s, right, where we realize we're going to have to drink differently. Right? The brewers give us the drink. They tell us, here you go. You know what? We're giving you a temperate ale, right? 5% alcohol. That's what you get. Now it's up to you to drink it responsibly and morally. Sit down and drink your beer. Try to control yourself. Don't drink too much, right? Do your part for democracy. Be a good citizen, right? Don't be debaucherous and disorderly. That's the message that comes through in the brewer's advertising throughout the 1920s and the 1930s into the 1940s. Quebec is the first province in Canada to break free of the chains of prohibition. But there are still many drafts left to drink, and all of Canada will not become wet again for another 29 years. <laughs> <laughs>